is the school system designed to get kids to grow into a thriving, self-responsible, self-reliant adult? Or is it to whittle away curiosity and to kind of stop them from thinking for themselves? It's certainly not the former in any way for the simple reason that throughout history, management doesn't know how to manage independent units, even partially independent units. Why shouldn't we ask, and any school people uh, watching your, your film should begin immediately to ask politely, why are we doing this? It's a question you never hear because it's heresy. I mean, the beleaguered classroom teacher doesn't know why he or she's doing that. They're told to do it. Maybe they can give a 5% personal spin. That's why they're doing it. Does it make sense for this particular life that's asking you the question? You don't know, and if you started to care, the logic of schooling would uh, dissolve. You, the, no one is able. You can answer the question for yourself. I used to say to my classes, and over the course of 30 years teaching, I taught kids from the Gold Coast to the Upper West Side of Manhattan, and I taught kids from the center of Harlem and Spanish Harlem. And I would say to all of them, you have a right at any time. You've got to be polite, though, because I'm just human, to say, why are we doing this? And if I can't produce an answer that convinces you that I believe it, then you have a right to opt out and do something else as long as you don't run wild and bring the whole house down. Uh, it, it helped me grow year after year. Not that it, they ask very often because they're conditioned not to do that, but enough did ask that I was put on my own metal to say, why am I doing this? And uh, it was a continual uh, expansion of my own insight until politically I couldn't do it any longer. The school, oddly enough, made me so internally famous that it drew extra attention and my system couldn't survive under the scrutiny because they would see the disparity between what I was doing and what the protocols were. So, so there. So it sounds like uh, the if I'm trying to get to the root cause of why your teaching career ended, it sounds like you started asking questions, John. And it sounded like the question started with why, with a question mark, and then maybe you were asking some other, like you know, the five W's plus how, and you were actually getting observed Constantly knowledge. Asking myself right. questions, then forcing my classes to ask me questions and themselves questions. And eventually, the productive output of my classes was so great, inadvertently, I didn't care how the school measured product, but it was so great that I would get visiting delegations, sometimes on a daily basis, for months, and they would leave baffled because they wouldn't see the drama unfolding that they understood as schooling, and they were right. It was less and less schooling, and eventually the pressure became impossible since I set out at the beginning of the year with an, an inner intention, if I had 120 kids, to have 120 individually written curricula. I never succeeded totally, but I got close enough that when the principal would drop by and only find nine people in class and say, where are the rest? 
that I ran out of strategies to explain where the rest were. So, so uh, yeah, I couldn't operate. I couldn't function any longer because my physical strength wasn't up to it. So, How did part of the strength of your actual teaching come from releasing children from the classroom and letting them go out in the world and actually gain some useful huge experience? huge amounts of it came from releasing anyone who had an independent course to follow, becoming that boy or girl's assistant, always with the mother's permission, because they couldn't deal with that kind of additional political pressure. So what they would learn and bring back would be like food for me. I would be like I was 120 people simultaneously. Oh, I learned much more than I learned at the two Ivy League colleges I attended.